Why? What you be doing? What do you mean what I be doing? <laughs> yeah, I said you say you have to get a legal standard on it, so people are trying to like Right. That, that's why you up I or something? All you have to do is stay a minute. Just take your time. The clock is ticking. So stay. All you have to do is stay. Yeah. What's going on, guys? Lockout men back again with another podcast interview for you guys today. I am Lockout Men, and welcome back to the Lockout Men podcast show. I want to thank you, thank you very much for being here, for watching, and all that good stuff. I am here up in Missouri, not Kansas City, Missouri. I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. Right here where the Ark is at. Now, if you guys ever been over to the Ark, it's a sight to be seen. I mean, I drive past it, so I haven't went. On, I, I haven't been by it yet. <laughs> you know, I heard that you can go inside. Is that true? I don't know if that's true or not. But thank you guys for tuning in. Welcome to the LOM community. What's going on, guys? If you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. If you want to help your boy out, you know what I'm saying? Hook, hook me up with some coffee, support the show, support the channel and all like that. You can do that. Cash app, dollar sign, lockout me, or the coffee app right now. I am drinking this core hydrated hydration water. Actually, I like the other water better, but hey, I gotta I got I gotta be drinking water, y'all. I can't can't drink like I like I drink. Well, in today's podcast interview, I found this young lady on Facebook. Interesting uh post that she put out on her previous company. We're going to get into all of that. We, we're going to get into all of that. Right now, I'd like to bring to the show, Miss... Make sure I pronounce her name right. Make sure, because I always beat people's names oh, up. Lord. Zipporah <laughs> Phillips. <laughs> What's going on, little lady? How you doing? I'm okay. Hello? And Hello, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah. Oh, there we go. We lost you there for a minute. You can, oh, sorry. sorry. You can't hear me? I got you. I got you. I got you. Oh. I got you. I, got you. I you said go. I'm fine. How are you doing? I am fine. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I, turned, I messed around and hit the wrong button on the board right quick. Yo, I got to I gotta get Don't myself. Cut a, me off already. I got to get myself a buzzer for that. <laughs> I'm over here like, yo, who? Hello? What? Yes. I happen to look over and I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, you got to bring her back in. Oh, man, Zippor. So what's right. going on with you? What is up with you today? Well, today I ain't, I'm doing, I ain't doing nothing but chilling at home right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've been, you know, trying to find jobs and stuff, but when the company is as nasty as they are and they put stuff on your DAC report, won't nobody touch you. You know what I'm saying? Well, we got we, So, we, we, we uh, gonna, my deal with Hirschbach is... Hold, hold on, hold on. We're we, we going to touch on all of that. We got to... We're going to touch on all of that. We need to know... Okay. Like, you know, it, it's not just about trucking. It's just about you, too. You know, we want to get to know you. You know what I'm saying? Um, Let's... Uh, let's well, okay. Let's, I'm originally from Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Yeah? Okay. What? Georgia. I mean, you you guys hear that? I I got yeah. you know what I got to do for now on for my Georgia people because I got a jingle for my my Texas and my Houston people. I gotta I gotta get a jingle for my Georgia people because majority of the people you sure do majority of the people who I interview guys and y'all know majority of the people that I interviewed already they're from Georgia either from Atlanta or or Georgia period. I don't get it. Have, was you born right. and raised? Was you born and raised down there, or or you moved down? There? Yes, I was. Yes, I was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. I graduated from McNair Senior High School oh. in '96. Okay, okay. So you, so you, you consider yourself, mm -hmm. you consider yourself a Georgia peach. Yes, big, plumpy, juicy Georgia peach. 
<laughs> you, say, you say big, you say big plump Georgia peach. God damn it, man! <laughs> oh man! All right, so uh, Frank, I, I'm I'm curious. You know what I am curious about? I am curious about What's your name. I am curious about your name, yo. Like that's that's a very okay. My name is biblical. Biblical. Explain that to me because your yeah. it, your name is like it's 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 an unordinary unor unordinary. It's Hebrew. Name. It's Hebrew. Okay. So yeah, it's a Hebrew. Yeah, Hebrew. Yeah. Uh, the poor in the Bible was on Moses' wife. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. She was Moses' wife in the Bible. It's hard shoes to feel. Trust me, because he did a lot. Uh, you know, highly right? respect it. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. So how how did your how did your parents come? I mean, like what they they was like you know they grew up in the church. They they uh, how well did, how, of course how of course school? my mom did. My mom did. She grew up in the church. Oh, okay, okay. So your yeah, mom um, yeah. My baby sister, her name is Miriam, and that's um that's the poorest um sister in law in the Bible. And you know that Miriam was cursed with leprosy for picking on the poorest dark skin tone. Okay, okay, okay. Now, Miriam, yeah. mm -hmm. now, I, I heard Miriam before. I mean, that's, you know, that's, yeah, that's not an unordinary, I mean, unordinary name, but yours, Zipporah, yeah. you know, I was mm -hmm. about, I, I was about to call you Zippo. <laughs> See, that's what I said. I, oh, I beat, please, I beat, really? I, I beat people's names up, man. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> what I do. I you know, Zippo, I, what happened to the rest of it? I, I know, right? That's why I had to hurry up and get the paper uh, because, you know, I write down, I got my notes right here so that, you know, it'll help me to remember shit. You know what I'm saying? So, Zippora. Mm. Am I putting out, Z say it, say it, no. how it sounds. Zip, Zippora, Zippora. Zippora. So, say it, how it sounds. Yes, a lot of people Z say Zipporah. Yeah, but see, a lot of people say Zipporah, Z-A instead of Z-I. It's mm -hmm. Zipporah. But in the Old Testament, it's actually Sephra, and it's spelled S-E-P-H-O-R-A. Okay. My mama spelled it like it was in the New Testament instead of the Old Testament. Okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. Shout yeah. out to your mother for giving you uh, such a such a extraordinary name. I like that. I, I like that. Yes. I like that. Thank you. All right, so let's uh let's uh let's let's uh let's start with your story, you know. How did you get started in trucking? Well, I've always wanted to be a truck driver. My dad and his brother drove trucks for over thirty years. And um when I decided to go into trucking at the time, I had got married in two thousand and five and around two thousand and eight I wanted to go to truck driving school because, you know, I did the nursing thing. And um, at the time, you know, my husband's like, you can't go to truck driving school over the road and leave me at home by myself. Hmm. So me trying to be obedient and submissive, mm -hmm. I stayed. And then I was only married to the sucker five years. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when I go back and I look and I think about it, I was like, you know what? I should have went anyway because I would have had 20 plus years experience by now. <laughs> so I had to raise my daughter. I waited till she turned 18. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started getting the feel of things, checking out truck driving schools, what's the best route to go to, you know what I'm saying? Which company should I choose and all of that stuff. And <laughs> it wasn't easy at first. I went to CRST trucking school that was absolutely garbage in Jacksonville, Florida. You know, and then I tried another one in uh, Tampa. I think they was hiring for Stevens Transport. They wasn't good. So then I wound up finding um, MTC in Missouri. Uh, and then the thing with that is, well, U.S. Express paid for me to get my um, CDL. And it was a lot harder in Missouri because you have to actually go to the state and test. And that was not easy. It was. It's not like where, you know, at CRST, they would test you on the yard with a licensed examiner and you fail the pass and that's just that. We had to go in front of the state. And I did it, uh, I went four times before I passed. Four right. times to right. the state before I passed. So you say you, you, say you started <laughs> off. But I got it. You say you started off, uh, you know, checking into all these, all these truck driving schools why not 
why mm-hmm. not why why not uh why not go for uh a community college uh truck driving school or independent truck driving school that didn't have nothing to do with the company why, why did you why did you go that route was it because you know the money situation wasn't right at the time or why yes. did you go that route yes yes i did not have yeah because i did not have the money to pay for it and you know when uh any trucking company send you to a truck driving school you have to work with them for a year at you least. don't as a new truck driver you never know what you're gonna get Mm-hmm. You don't know what you're going to run into. So everything for us that's been, whether you just start now or it's been a little under a year, a little over a year, it's still, it's still new. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you have to learn everything from the very beginning. So it was not like, oh, say, I can go to this school or this company because it's the best one out here. You do your own research and then sometimes you win, sometimes you fail. You know, it's like a gamble when you first start out getting your CBS. You don't know what to expect. Right. Right. So that's what it was with me. So, you know, I wound up going to U.S. Express and it was absolutely awful. So, you know what I'm saying? But you want your CDLs, you don't have the money. So you kind of like, you know, let them pay for it. And so that's I, how it was. I'm, I'm, I'm going to back up because you said CRST was just completely garbage. So what was your what was your experience with, with CRST trying to get your license? Oh, my God. The hotel had bed bugs and roaches they would not change your room they would not come sanitize the rooms the instructors were prejudiced they didn't call you by your name they would call you boy or gal and you know we had some african-american men in them schools when that white instructor come out of their mouth and say boy oh you had a whole argument because it was just disrespect they was not going to tolerate okay hold up you know what i'm saying so same thing in the same thing in missouri it was like that in missouri too hold up right quick Mm -hmm. hold up Boy, girl, this is. So I heard that they closed down. Yes, this is so they cool. did not. Cause see, in truck driving school, at truck driving school, from what I've seen, they call you by your last name. They never use your first name as a last name basis. But you had the white instructors that were so prejudiced. You know, they retired army, retired police officers, so they kind of use that to their advantage to be disrespectful, and they would call you boy or gal. Like your mama didn't give you a name. You understand what I'm saying? Right. It's just yeah, they were they were very disrespectful. So this yeah. how long ago was how long ago was this at CRST? That was in two thousand and eighteen. Okay. I was there for probably about three weeks and then I left and say, No, I can't tolerate this disrespect because how the way they talk to the black men was enough for me to leave. You understand what I'm saying? They were just rude and disrespectful all the time. Because they had seniority or they felt like they could talk to you any kind of way because you need them. They don't need you. You mm. see what I'm saying? Mm. So they treated you just like that. Well, you could go and we'll put somebody else in your place if you don't like how I'm talking to you. Mm. Yeah, it was like that. Well, you know what? You know, mm-hmm. you know, truck driving schools that's 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 that are uh, that are sponsored by companies. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, you, mm-hmm. you you get a lot of you get a lot of guys like maybe like thirty at a time, and then they got to weed out weed out the thirty. So I guess yeah. their their demeanor, right. the the instructors the instructors demeanor towards you guys wasn't all that hot because they already knew that like, right like maybe about fifty. Maybe you didn't have no about, money right. and we giving you something. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And they figured that 50% of yep. it is not going to make at it you like you were pole. Right. So exactly. And they looked at you like you were pole. Yeah. Man. That's, that's trashy hotels, nasty food. <laughs> Man. That's, yep. that's, that's, that's crazy. All right. So, mm-hmm. so CRST was, was, was done. And who you go to next after mm-hmm. that? I went to, um, I think the only reason why I didn't do the one in Tampa for Stephen Transport is because they wanted me to take the CDL exam all over again. And I was like, well, why would I do that if I've already taken everything? And I had to do the same thing in Missouri, but I did it. But I was like, why would I do all of that? I came from Jacksonville, Florida and passed all my tests, and now I'm here in Tampa, and you want me to retake all the CDL's exams? I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. So I was there probably overnight, and then I left. 
But I was like, why do I have to take all this crap all over again? It's hard enough already as it is. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's time based and you can only miss so many. You got to study really hard. Why would I put myself through that again? So I left there. I got you the uh hold on for yep. a second. I, I got you that master chef trucking. I got you. I'll get with you on that in the uh in a minute, bro. Um all right, so Stevens Transport, they they wanted you to just start all over, but you already had you you already coming from CRST. You already had like, I had a already foot had my door. I had already had my CDL permit. Yeah, mm-hmm. I had the permit. I had the CDL permit. Mm-hmm. And you know the CDL permit. I think is good for like ninety days or something right. like that. If I'm right. correct, thirty or right. ninety days. Right. The CDL permit, and they wanted me to take all those exams over again. Like, why would I do that? No, CDLs are very hard to get and easy to lose. Why would I do that? I'm not. I was like, no, I'm not doing it. You know, you said, you know what, you you just but said, I, you just said the magic word right there. Very hard to get and very easy to lose. A lot of these, a lot of these new yeah. jets, a lot of these new jets out here needs needs to know that that your license is hard to yeah. get because they, you know, it's a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of mm-hmm. money. Yes, it's a lot blood, of time. sweat, and tears. It's a lot of time. And, like, yep. you know, the stuff that she went mm-hmm. through, you know, the boy and the girl and the disrespect. But then you can lose your license yes. just like that. Just like that. All right. And I'm see- trying to tell you, see, people need to treat their CDLs like gold. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. So That's the truth. They so, treat them like gold. So MTC. That's uh that's Yes, that's in St. Louis, Missouri. That's where you uh where you just said fuck it. You just put your skirt up. Yeah, and re and just, re, and re just yes, yes. I took my tail between my legs. Yep, I took my tail between my legs. I restudied and I went and just took the exams all over again. And yeah. You, and you, I did. And you finally made it through. So what was Because I knew in my heart that it was something that I wanted to do, you know? I always wanted to do it. So what was the what was the thing with uh US Express? You uh you had to pay them you had to pay them back or did they t- did they take it? Yes, out of you your... have to yes, you have to yes. Yes, yes, you have to pay them back and um yeah, they would take it out of your um your paycheck. But see with MTC MTC wasn't was was just as bad as CRST. I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend my dog to go to MTC truck driving school. Mm. Mm. They were so prejudiced. Because wasn't Missouri like the last state to get rid of slaves or something like that? I, the slavery law, something like that, Missouri? I guess so. Wasn't they the last state to get to go to go away with that? I, mm, I so go, Missouri I is, I don't I don't know if you were born and raised there, but no. yeah, I don't know if you was born and raised there, but I'm no. talking about my experience at mm. MTC. You know, uh, all of the instructors were white. We had, we were, we had like three black instructors you know i had one guy he was from alabama then it was one that was from missouri and then the other guy i can't remember where he was from but the knowledge is there as far as them teaching you they can teach you really well but they didn't have no respect for you at the same time Mm. you understand what i'm saying okay Okay. you know because i'm like okay if this was in the this was like like the peak the pre-trip the pre-trip is the first thing that they teach you, and you cannot go to state unless you get 95% or better on your pre-trip on the yard, which is good because they taught you the truck front and back, inside and out. You knew the whole truck from the front to the back. That was good. You understand what I'm saying? But at the same time, like, I went there in the summer, in May, mm-hmm. hot as hell, mm-hmm. 100-plus degree weather, mm-hmm. if not worse. And they didn't even have enough decency to put out buckets of ice water or, or put tents out. And you had to stand on your feet and be in the hot scorching sun. I was four shades darker when I left Missouri. No lie. I, like, just recently got my skin tone back. And then um, they wouldn't give us tent. They wouldn't give us ice water. What they did was Zip. open up some garage Zipporah. and push the machines Zip. to the front where you Zip. had to pay a dollar and fifty cents. Zipporah, huh? hold, hold that thought right quick. I want to acknowledge yeah. somebody. I want to acknowledge somebody that just came up in the building. I like to acknowledge Jay Rich live that just stepped up in the building. What's going on, Jay Rich? How you doing? Uh, and uh, 
acknowledge D Nitty. He has something to say about the CDLs. All right, go ahead and continue. I'll I'll say what he had to say after you finish. Okay, yeah, and I was just saying that um they didn't they don't show as much respect for you because you're not giving them anything. You see what I'm saying? Like you was expressed like, okay, we'll send you to MTC truck driving school and it was like a little, little bit under six thousand dollars and they were like you had to work for them for a year and they would take it out of your pay. But see the thing about that that would have been fine if you would have made enough money to pay the loan back and take care of your household. It doesn't make any sense to any company to say, okay, I'm going to send you to truck driving school. And they can't, I was getting what, 35 cents a mile because I lived in Florida. They, they can't give you the cents per mile or they can't give you the miles to make the money and pay the loan back. So what sense does it make for me to work for a company as a company driver? I got almost $6,000 in this loan through Liberty Finance and I'm in the negative almost every week. What am I supposed to do with three, four hundred dollars a week, even if I got that or no money at all? And it's like it sets you up for failure. So I suggest anybody, you know, work on your credit, save your money. If you want to go to CDL school, pay cash or get a loan through the bank or don't go through no trucking company and let them send you to a truck driving school. It's it's. It doesn't benefit you. See, it doesn't benefit you at all. See, it's a setup a lot, for failure. A lot of people, a, a lot of people, a lot of people that want to jump into this industry, man, into this game, they want to turn around and say, "Oh, well, you know, I'll go through the truck driving school and yada yada yada." But yeah, situation mm -mm. Si situation that happened. That's why I did my research before I, you know, I knew that U.S. Express because I asked the 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 lady there, but I I. I knew that U.S. Express was that they had their own school at the time. And I knew that, you know, that you had to, you know, that you had to be obligated to the company for like a year. But yeah, I, I paid oh, yeah, 12 months. Yep. I, I paid for my license and I still got I still got crap at U.S. Express. So I can just imagine yeah. you have I mean, you paying U.S. Express back the money, you know, six thousand dollars and all like that. And not getting no miles. I've been there. I've been there. I know. Right. I know. 35, 35 cents a mm -hmm. mile. You know, that's that's bullshit. Yeah. You know? That's crazy. Yep, exactly. That's so, exactly what it is, bullshit. So so you uh <laughs> so with so with US Express, you you didn't stay you didn't stay there long. So what is Well actually what I did was I what's what? What what is the time what is the time frame now uh at US Express? You you went through CRST in two thousand and eight, right? So where's the time frame at between No, that I went no, it was it was two thousand it was no it was two thousand eighteen. Two thousand eighteen, I'm sorry. So where's the time frame between yeah. between CRST and US Express? Okay, well I didn't stay at um I went, okay, I didn't stay at CRST. I went to CRST probably January, maybe mid-January. I was back by February. Mm -hmm. And then I tried uh, Tampa. That didn't work. I went to MCT in May of 2019. Okay, okay. May of 2019, I went to uh, MTC in St. Louis, Missouri. All right. So and I stayed, I didn't leave there until June. Okay. How long you was with U.S. Yeah. How long yeah, you was with U.S. Express? U.S. Express, okay. I was with U.S. Express for three months, and it, the money wasn't there. So I left U.S. Express. Mm -hmm. And, you know, advice is to, like, any new truck driver, you have to find a good company where you can be there for one year with that one company. Because if you get one year under your belt, driving over the road you could pretty much get a job anywhere if you keep a clean driving record but i was at u.s express for um three months and then the money wasn't there and i left but they kept calling me and calling me and calling me to come back and mind you i'm a new driver i'm three months in so i tell them i said well you know what i said i'm not gonna come back then unless y'all put me in the lease purchase program mm -hmm. so i went back there in december to the lease purchase program. Now, the money was good sometimes, and then sometimes the money wasn't because what these trucking company does is that they'll give you the shittiest truck with the highest mileage that they can possibly find. 
you might do five days running and then you're going to be down for another week and a half. The trucks never stay running enough for you to make the money. But when it did, you made really good money. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They they give you shitty trucks. I don't I don't understand that. Like it's and like I don't doing, suggest nobody this, do lease purchase. And this, and this is doing lease purchase that they gave you a shitty truck. I thought yes. I thought you would get a yes. I thought you would get a better truck for lease purchase. At least you would if you they, were gonna pay for it. At you least would. that's what they tell you. You would if you was gonna pay for it. But you are paying but for listen, it. Listen, they you, had. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You are. Yes. You are. But this is how they. This is how they get you. They'll say, I have this 2016 Freightliner, right. and the, the total price of this Freightliner is like $54,000, and by the time they get finished financing and everything, it's $94,000. You could get this truck and pay $750 a week, or you could get this 2018, 2019, take on a three-year lease, and pay three dollars $400 a week. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's how they was doing it, but I was like, I don't want... I was like, I don't want to be committed to no three-year lease. And do you know, even though it's a walkaway lease, they still calling me, telling me that I owe them money. But it's a walkaway lease, though. On a walkaway lease, right? This they is you, still this is, calling me, saying that I owe them money on a walkaway lease. This yep, is you as Express. Express still calling you, saying that you owe them and money. And every time, yep, and they, mm-hmm, yep, on a walkaway lease. And every time he called me, he gonna get the same answer, and it's not pretty. They wait. They still calling you. Know what I'm you saying? So they, they still calling you to this day. Yes, I left and I'm. I was there from December of 2019 to March of two, of 2020. I made really good money. I made enough money that when I moved back home, I furnished my whole house cash. The money was there only if you had a truck that would run for you to make the money. But I've been broken down plenty of times. Because when you're over the road, you really don't have nothing to spend any money on. So anybody that's over the road and always broke, there's no excuse for that. Because you, you don't have time to spend no money. All you got time to do is work. Hmm. And they still calling me, telling me that I owe them money, like $5,000 on the lease. Really, dude? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Call me back when you when you turn blue in the face and you stop breathing. Jay Rich Live says, really? Jay Rich Live says we all have, we all have. Uh, been there. She says she started at thirty cent a mile. <laughs> yeah, she uh, she chronicles her. See what I'm uh, saying? She chronicled her uh, her YouTube through her YouTube that she went through Stevens uh, Transport and they started her at uh, thirty cent a mile. So yeah, you gotta you gotta you gotta crawl before so you insulting. walk. You gotta you gotta crawl before you walk. But yeah, you do. I think I, yeah, I think most these, definitely. I think these trucking companies now that I've been in the game for a long time. I think some of these trucking companies is just taking advantage of of some of the new drivers, though. Do you do you do you agree with? They my set statement? you up for failure no matter what. Yeah, you don't have no experience. They'll tell you anything, and you don't know, so you're gonna go off of what they say. Everything is based off of experience. You know what I'm saying? That's why when I was out there over the road, I talked to a lot of old school cats. And ask them, you know what I'm saying, what's the best route to go? What's the best company to work for? Should I do lease purchase? They was like, no. They was like, you should wait at least two years after you get your CDLs before you do lease purchase because you got to be able to pay yourself. You got to be able to pay the maintenance, take care of the truck, and still be able to take care of your house and whatever other personal things that you have going on. They, it's best that you learn the business first before you do lease purchase. I don't been bit so many times with lease purchase. My goal now is to buy my own truck. And I've had my CDLs a year, and I'm ready to buy my own truck because I feel like I do better as an owner-operator where I really, really have control over my life and my money versus me doing the lease purchase and I'm getting shitted on every week. It's a problem with the paycheck or a problem with the miles or the DM is nasty as hell. If I have my broker license and my own tractor, you work for me. I don't work for you. You yeah. need me to run this freight. I don't need you to run your freight because there's so many people out here that are tree owner operating with the highest respect if they had their own truck. You see what I'm saying? I like the way you're thinking over there, Zabora. Uh-huh. I, I like the way you're thinking over there. Yeah. You know, definitely like the way you're mm-hmm. thinking. So... I guess along the way, it it you know within your short time, it it hasn't been it hasn't been smooth, you know. 
Um, no, it has not. It's been absolutely awful. <laughs> but you live and you learn. You understand what I'm saying? It hasn't been good. Trust me, it hasn't been good. So, yeah. I, like I said in the beginning, I, I, I found you in, in Facebook on the post that you did with Hirschbach. Now, I've spoken with a couple of drivers that have drove driven for Hirschbach. I've spoken with some drivers uh -huh. that I've spoken to some drivers that didn't like it. I've spoken to some drivers that did like it. And I even had uh, I even had the director of media on the show to come and talk about Hirschbach mm -hmm. as well. What was your uh -huh. what was your yeah. experience with Hirschbach? Oh Lord, are you sitting down? Uh yeah, yeah. I think we I'm gonna start. Are. Yeah, I'm almost. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start from the beginning, and everybody's list is gonna be like, really? Okay, so you know, I have been following Hirschbach for a while because you know Hirschbach has the 99 cents a mile on the diesel, and uh, they have um, they have um, they lease purchase program is not that bad because they got the 99 cents on the diesel. And then, you know, the, the, their trucks are really, really, really overpriced. But, you know, you have to have a year experience to um, drive for the Hirschbach. But because of the um, pandemic, I was able to get in there only nine months. You know, they got the satellite, um, they had a satellite TV, they have the TVs, uh, the refrigerator, they have the Wi-Fi, all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? They pay like $900 for orientation, whatever the case may be. But when I got hot on at Hirschbach, they had took away the satellite and they just had the TV and the refrigerator and you pay like $10 a week for the Wi-Fi service. Mm -hmm. And I came into Hirschbach doing lease purchase. And I made I made pretty good money doing lease purchase with Hirschbach because I was only paying like $300 a week in diesel if I only paid that. And I'm going to say the trick to Hirschbach lease is that you have to fill up what they tell you to to get your 99 cents on your diesel. And you have to, you can't go out of route. Because if you go out of route based off of what's on that Qualcomm, they would, um, they would charge you 5% a mile going out of route wait you that, that you, that's you how lease, that's how you kept your lease purchasing a truck from hirschbach and they yeah that's they, what i was doing yeah lease they, purchase. they telling you where to fuel that yes they said that's how you get your 99 cents a gallon on your diesel anybody that's driving for hirschbach doing lease purchase they know that they have to fill up where they tell them to based off of the route that they're taking. So if I had a load going somewhere and they'll send me a fuel stop, I will put my load into my Ram McNally and then I will add my fuel stop. So by the time, and then like they'll say, okay, go to the Love in um, Arkansas and get 99 gallons. They'll tell you exactly how much diesel they wanted you to get because you know when you do your report, when you drop your load and you put everything in, your end, the end of uh, you dropping your load, you have to tell them how much diesel you have in your tractor. But I'm going to tell you the trick to it was with me because, you know, Hirschbach will send you way to freaking 10 buck too to get a load empty if they know you got a full tank of diesel. So I will, I will always tell them I had less than what I actually had because you're not going to send me eight hours with no empty trailer to pick up no load because I got a full tank of diesel. You know what I'm saying? So I would tell them I got like a quarter tank and I had a full tank and I would get the shortest route possible to pick up that load and take it somewhere else. It's not like they're going to say, and they gave me fuel stops that I actually passed. But then I would know they would say, okay, go to this pilot and get 99 gallons. When I ran out, when I got to like maybe a quarter tank of diesel, I would stop at the pilot, but it wouldn't be in the city that they wanted me to stop in it at because I had a full tank of diesel when I'm telling you I only had a quarter tank because they'll send you where across town with an empty trade to pick up a load. It irritated me to the core. Made my skin crawl. It was the most irritating thing. I couldn't stand it. So I'm, I could I'm, not stand it. I'm still you know what I'm saying? To, so, I'm, I'm still trying to figure I, out that you being a lease driver, you paying for the truck. Mm -hmm. You paying for the truck. Yep, and the diesel. And the, and the and diesel. And the insurance and everything. And all that other stuff. And you got to pay for your tolls and all that, all that stuff. Everything. You, it came out to be about 1500 a week. But you got to go to their fuel stops. I, I don't get that. Because if you, if yep. you like, you know, the lease purchaser, you know, owner, operator, owner, or in training, that's what I call it. 
owner operator in training. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Th- shouldn't you mm-hmm. be the one to choose where to get the fuel at? Yes, you should, but they saying that that's the only way that you can keep the 99 cents a gallon on the diesel if you fuel or what they tell you to. And they got it in the contract. They got the diesel in the contract and they got the 5% a mile for going out of route. And it's a way around that too. Like if, if okay, my Ram McNally, uh, okay, I go into Quellcom and it'll say, okay, you got 300 miles to get to this stop. But I put it in my Ram McNally and it say it's only... 200 and two and a half, 200 miles, 230 miles. I'm going to follow my Ram McNally. But see, what I do is I would never put start trip. Because once you hit start trip, they know exactly yeah, where you started tracking. from. Right. So if I know that I'm going to, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like like if, if I had, if okay, say for instance, no, I said that backwards. My Ram McNally will give me a route that's 50 miles shorter. I'm not going to use your route and go all the way around you see what I'm saying? It's like if you go off of what, if you go out of route, they charge you 5%. So I wouldn't start my trip until I got where I was at. Like, oops, I forgot. I would go swipe at the start and then swipe a ride. I already don't win 50 miles out of route, but you don't know that because you don't know exactly when I started my trip. It was always ways around it because I would talk to other drivers and they would give me ideas. Well, you know, they charge that 5%, so don't start your trip until after you get there. I do it all the time. So- <laughs> You know, you know what I'm Hirsch, saying? So Hirschbach, it was ways around it. Hirschbach, I always thought of Hirschbach as as a glorified, you know, they always always thought they 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 yep. lease purchase program was a glorified company, you know, company driver. You know I did saying? too. I did too, because I had been doing research on them, yeah. Because But I was on the outside looking in, baby. You know, I did the the one interview that I did with the with the one driver. He told me about uh, Hirschbach giving them uh, giving him a certain lane. Like he can't, like he's he's dedicated uh, lease purchase. Yeah. he's That's dedicated. Meaning yeah. that you know he can't. Yeah, he I did can't refuse, too. Mm-hmm. He can't refuse the loads, and I'm like, wait, really? You can't refuse the load, like. Yep. You it's because because on dedicated they pay your truck no and your diesel. On dedicated they pay your truck no and your diesel. Mm. That's why. Because I was doing Tyson and Tyson paid my truck no and my diesel, so all the money I made was mine. Cause Tyson paid that just for me to haul their freight. Well, you know, Swamp Girl says she would But have Tyson her- wasn't why I left her box. Swamp Girl says that uh, she would have had her own fuel card. Was was that a thought at one time for you that the to just get your own fuel card and and just and just say you know I you know what I I I asked I asked them about that and they said that I would get a better deal with the ninety nine cents on the diesel than I would get from an outside company. Mm. I did ask them could I get my own fuel card because I was actually looking into it mm. and see if I would have known. If I would have really, really did the research, I would have gotten my own fuel card because I feel like I would have saved more money than what the company thought they were saving me. You know what I'm saying? Okay. They talked me out of it because I asked. Now, yeah. at, now at this particular time, how how long have you been with Hirschbach before you decided to leave? I was only there five months. I started in April and left in August. All right, so that's roughly five months. So. Take me back to that post on your on your Facebook. What happened, which you know forced you to okay leave? Okay, but before we get to the post, I got to tell you what led up to the post. Okay. I'm not gonna call no names. We're just gonna talk about the person. Oh, okay. Because I ain't trying to get sued or nothing. But um, no, no, so, no names. No um, names. right, right, right. I had I had a boyfriend at the time. Got over 20 years experience driving trucks. So I was working for U.S. Express. He was working for DART. So I had told him that I was going over to Hirschbach because they only taking you like nine months experience. And he spoke very highly of the company, too. But see, the thing about it is that he had jumped so many jobs that Hirschbach wouldn't hire him, no matter how much experience he had, because they want to know if you if you come, are you going to stay? But you staying is it, it, not a it's, the comp. It's up to the company whether you stay or not. It has nothing to do with you. It's how you're treated whether you're going to stay with this company or not. So um, he, uh, 
So we said, okay, we're going to move to Atlanta. You understand what I'm saying? It's supposed to have been something long term. So we said, you know, we're going to move to Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? I'm really, really good at saving. Really good at saving. You understand what I'm saying? So uh, with that being said, he had a gambling problem. And a drinking problem. But you know how you you in love with somebody, you love somebody, you kind of like overlook that shit because you like, hopefully it'll get better or, you know, maybe he'll change. And then sometimes all you have to do is just pray for people. You know what I'm saying? And let God do his work in them. You know what I'm saying? Instead of you trying to do your work in them, it's not going to work because that's when they become defiant and they, they resist you. So um, what happened was I was like, okay, we're team driving. It was my truck. It was my truck when I got hired on Hershbox. They hired him and put him in my truck at second seat. So I was like, okay, you know, well, uh, you know, we finna, I was living in Florida at the time. I was like, well, you know, I want to move back home. And I had been asking God to move back home for years, no lie, because I always try to ask for permission from God before I do stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because I left Atlanta for a reason. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, by being so frustrated and, and the change of scenery, I will always pray and say, God, can I go home? And his answer will always be, no, you're not ready to go back home yet. So that was the work that he had to do in me for me to come back to Atlanta. It took 10 years for me to get back home mm-hmm. because he would not let me go until he said that I can go. And I respect that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I thank okay. him every day for allowing me to move back home because I was absolutely miserable in Florida. But anyway, so I was like, okay, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to sign the truck over to you, and then I'm going to get out the truck, and I'm going to do what I got to do to move us to Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? I'm a very, very, very strong individual. You know what I'm saying? So I said, I'm going to do what I got to do to move us to Atlanta. You keep rolling, let the truck make some money, and then pick me up whenever. Now, you understand know what I'm saying? Hold, so, hold that thought. Uh, hold, hold that thought, Zipporah. This is, this, this is, this is, this is the boyfriend that, that, that couldn't get in with Hirschbach, the one that you you know trying to let him take over the take over the lease. Yeah, because they, he had he, he had yeah he he had jumped he had no, but this, he had jumped a lot of jobs. So U.S. Express had this criteria where if you have so many jobs in a certain amount of money, they're not going to hire you because they don't feel like you're going to stay with their company. But you know, as time goes by, all of those truck driving jobs they drop off. They drop off. They drop off your record. That, that the CDL companies with the truck job companies pull, that them, them old jobs fall off. Okay. So, so he this- had, and then I'm going to tell you, another, another thing that helped him was the pandemic. A lot of these trucking companies were hiring people because of the pandemic. And I fell in love with Hershbach is because when all those people, when that truck job company went out of business and Hershbach fired all those people, I was like, and Hershbach hired all those people, I was like, yeah, this is a job I want to go to. They seem like they treat people well. That was real sweet of them to offer these people jobs and bus tickets and plane fares, come to Orange they get you high, boom. I was like, okay, well, maybe this is a great company. But it didn't turn out like that. Okay. So, we did home time, huh? Okay, so we're still you 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 kind of mentioned U.S. Express, but you you meant to say Hirschbach, right? We we we're, we're at, yeah, I meant to say Hirschbach. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah, we we're we're at Hirschbach. I meant to say Hirschbach. I'm sorry. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, we at Hirschbach. I didn't mean to say U.S. Express. <laughs> so the boy, so the boyfriend, uh, still don't work for Hirschbach, but you. You can let him come in to drive the truck. No, they hired, but see, no, oh, they, no, they hired him they to hired drive. Him to, they, they, uh, okay. they hired him, okay. but we got in the car, we got in the truck as co-drivers. And okay. I'm see another thing Hirschbach does is that um, you can buy a truck for them and you can put somebody else in it. You don't even have to drive it. They have that program too. Okay. They okay. have that program too. Okay. But anyway, okay. so we had did we had did we had did home time for uh, uh, Memorial Day weekend. And I thought this was very selfish because I had already been in the truck three weeks before he got in it. We did an additional additional two weeks. I would have thought that he would have been respectful enough to say, what do you want to take your home time at? Because, you know, I was I was the type of person, well, you know, so I like to make the money, so I do three days, I do three weeks out, sometimes four, be tired as hell when I get back home, but it all pays out in the end. I thought that he would have said, where well, you want to take your home time at? You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, he liked the, the partying and the drinking and the hanging out. I'm not on that. We're the exact same age. I'm not on that. You know what I'm saying? So for me having to be dragged out 
in, in, in your home time, be out all day partying, drinking, and I can't, I, I just, mentally, I was not there. So um, what happened was um, he did the home time in his hometown, which made me highly upset, highly upset. But um, so I had went to the next state over, and I had got my toes and my uh, nails done and, and my hair, because I had dreads at the time. I cut my dreads off after like 13 years. So I have a low haircut now. So I went to this lady and got my dreads done. Then I went and got my toes and nails done, whatever the case may be. You know, when women do that stuff, that stuff takes all day. That's not a in and out process. You know what I'm saying? You got a, two hours at the salon. You got an hour and a half, two hours in the nail shop, depending on how backed up they are and what you're actually getting done. So I get back that night. Okay. I say, okay, you know, I'm going to get back and we're going to hang out, you know, see what's going on. The man accused me of everything under the sun. You hear me? I was over in the next day fucking all sleeping with this guy and that guy. The man got in the truck and was sniffing the sheets and the pillows. And I had some fuck somebody in the truck in broad daylight. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. I'm on the phone. I'm sorry about that. So that was my daughter. I'm sorry about that. So he, he gets in the tractor and he starts smelling the sheets and the pillows saying that I was fussing somebody in the tractor and doing all this old crazy, unnecessary stuff. And he was doing all this because he was intoxicated. Okay. And I was like, dude, like, I was like, dude, what are you talking about? I was like, I went and got my toes and nails done. I said, I wouldn't, I don't know nobody in this state. I wasn't sleeping with nobody in this state. The man got behind the wheel. Driving the tractor drunk. I'm talking about hitting bumps, hitting curves, slamming on brakes, Stop. driving Stop. over here, driving over Stop. there. So Stop. listen now, it gets better. Stop. Oh, it gets better. Stop. It gets better. Stop. It gets better. Stop. <laughs> Why in the hell you let this man get behind the wheel of the truck intoxicated? He jumped, he jumped into the driver's seat. I had walked away because I didn't want to argue with him in front of his friends. So I walked away and I, um, I started putting my bags and stuff in the truck. And then when he came in, he came into the truck and he started sniffing the sheets and all of that stuff, right? So I said in the passenger seat, like, dude, you're tripping. He jumped in the driver's seat and turned the key. And I said, dude, I said, you've been drinking probably since like nine o'clock this morning. Do you think you need to be driving this tractor? I ain't drunk and took off. And okay. it was an absolute disaster. It was the scariest thing of my life. I thought really? I was going to die. Hold, hold that thought. Yeah. I, okay. <laughs> He's driving intoxicated. Where were yeah. you? I was in the passenger seat with my seat belt on. I was in the passenger seat with my seat belt on. And then eventually I got in the I got in the bunker. I got in the bunker. I, eventually I got okay. in the bunker. Okay, Zippor. And I was like, you know, stop, Z let Z me out of this truck. Zippor, I okay, I am What you wanted me to do? I, jump out the door? I am beside myself. You should have you should have figured out some way of getting this man out of that seat drop because right now he's putting he's putting your mm -hmm. life and his in jeopardy right now right you got to let me finish the story oh, let okay. me finish okay so then it was so much it was so much jerking around and so much ruckus going on with the truck that the safety camera came on so safety calls me you know what I'm saying? Because they're recording this. You know what I'm saying? When I when I finally looked up and I saw that green light on, I was like, oh, shit. So they record images and sounds and everything. So they called me, told me, they said, get out of that truck right now. I was like, well, as soon as he stopped driving, I'll get out of it. I don't understand what you want me to do. You know what I'm saying? I said, when he stopped driving it, I will get out of the truck. And then they had called the, 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 the police in that county. They never came. And when I talked to, when I finally got all my stuff out of the truck and talked to, like, the people at the hotel, they was like, oh, they don't care. They're not coming over here. I said, your best bet would have been in the white area when it happened. They would have came in, like, three seconds. The black cops don't care what goes on in this neighborhood. That's why they didn't come. They didn't show up until after I was already in the hotel. They called my phone after I was already out the truck in the hotel. Okay, so he finally stops the truck. 
I'm packing up my stuff, getting out of the truck. He's still talking all kinds of crap, blah, 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 this and that. At this point, I have nothing else to say to you. So um, I'm getting all my stuff out of the truck. And in that in that certain town, there was no such thing as an Uber driver. No Uber driver, no taxi. So I'm like, oh, my God, how am I supposed to get to the hotel? How in the hell am I supposed to get all? Mind you, the truck was mine, so I was comfortable. Everything that was in it was mine. He got in the truck with two bags. So I'm like, what the hell am I going to do? How am I going to get to this hotel? So I wound up calling the hotel that I needed to go to. They say, oh, we have an Uber driver in town. I called the Uber driver. He went across town. It was still going to take him like 45 minutes to get to me, right? The man threw all my shit out the truck. And do you know Horsebox did not fire him? Okay. I got kicked out of my truck, and they did not fire him. Okay, 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 okay. They did not fire him. Okay, uh, okay. I'm, I'm all. I am literally all over the place right now. So, dude. Yeah. So, so dude stopped the truck, kicked you out of the truck, and then took off with the truck. No, no, he didn't kick me out of the truck. He left that Monday. He left that Tuesday. On the load. No, no. I'm, that I'm was talking, his hometown. Wait, I was stranded in a hotel. Okay, but wait. I'm I'm talking about when he was driving. You so he was he was I'm the, he was the he truck drove, had, the truck had he, stopped moving then. No, he well he drove he so he drove the truck to the hotel where you was where you was stranded at. No, he drove the truck until he stopped driving the truck when. Safety called me. It's like this little area where a truck do like overnight parking, but I still had to get my all my stuff out of the truck to get to a hotel. But why? Wait, and why it, not, it, there was no why, there's no Ubers not, in town. Why not? What is your truck? Why not kick him out of the truck? Like, bruh, you gotta go. Because no, I signed. I had signed the truck over to him because we had plans to move to Georgia. It was no longer in my name. I was. For second seat and he was first seat there's only one lease at Hirschbach the US Express had joint leases it's one lease at Hirschbach one one lease and once I signed the truck over to him it was no longer my truck it was his truck so that's why I was the one that had to go because it was no longer my truck so if that you know was, what I'm saying? so if that was that, the, if that makes sense did you did you report him at uh at the time when when you said the safety camera yes, came Yes, I told you when all this was going on this when all this yeah, when all this stuff was going on safety reviewed it and listened to everything and the DM at the time told me that he reviewed the safety videos and they can prove that he was driving intoxicated but then it they got to the legal standpoint where they said, well, we can't find him, accuse him of drunk driving because he wasn't pulled over by the police and he wasn't fist test. I was like, but lady, you saw him intoxicated driving. Why you didn't order him to get piss tested in? Why you didn't order a urine test right then and there? Why would the police have to have pulled him over when clearly you looking at this freaking video, listening to the video, looking at the video while all this foolishness is going on? Okay, let me. But I was the one that had to get out of the truck with my whole fucking apartment, let basically. Me, let me back up a little bit. This, this is the dude that you. Okay. This is the dude that you called your boyfriend at one point. Like, how long y'all been talking? Before? I did not know his. I didn't. I didn't. It was a year, but I didn't know his drinking problem was that bad. I knew he had a gambling problem, but I never knew the drinking was that bad because you don't have those CDLs over 20 years. I would never think that you would drive drunk in a, a car, let alone a freaking tractor. You see what I'm saying? So. Like, you had your CDLs like 22 years. You would never jeopardize it before. Why do it now? So, that situation happened. You told Hirschbach about it. Right. And then I had, yeah, you, yeah. And they did not fire him. So they rented me a car. I had to go to uh, Massachusetts to pick up the truck. No, I went to Iowa. I went to Iowa and picked up the truck. They didn't talk to him. They didn't call him in for nothing. They, HR interviewed me. How the hell are you going to interview me when I'm the victim in all this shit? So the second truck that they gave me wasn't even showing up in the geo tab i refused to drive that and then the third truck they gave me was a piece of freaking garbage i did one load in it, it was broke down for six days in pennsylvania 
And then after, you know what I'm saying, after all that shit, and I was like, you, I said, you know what? I was like, I'm done. So this gets to the Facebook post. So um, I was on my way on home time. I got home uh, August 9th. I was on my way home time, found out, you know what I'm saying, that my homeboy died in his sleep. And then two, two, uh, two days later, my cousin dies. And then my sister had to have this major surgery. And you know what I'm saying? I, I had already emailed them telling them that I was going to quit based off of the drunk driving incident and the, and the two raggedy trucks. And Brad, the owner, I have emails from him where he begged me to stay and promised me a brand new truck when I got back. And then I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll think about it. You know what I'm saying? But then I got to thinking about it again. I was like, no, fuck that. I was like, they drive the Midwest. It's snowy. It's dangerous. I was like, why would I do that when I can find a local job right here at home? Don't have to deal with the snow. Be out five days, be home two days was the better thing for me. But see, they got mad because they had to come and get the truck. That's why I was like, this is not going to stick. I got all the emails about everything that was going on in my life at that time how I could not have time to turn the truck in. They wanted me to go 700 some miles to drop off a truck. That's a day and a half. And then they wanted to pay for me a ticket to get back. No, I got two funerals that I have to attend. And plus my sister had that surgery where I had to, she was literally at my house for a week and a half. So they got mad because they had to come and get the truck. That's where the truck abandonment come from. They got mad because they had to come and get it. That's what pissed me off. And before I even called my attorney, my oldest sister is a lawyer. Before I even called my sister, I tried to handle it on my own. You understand what I'm saying? But I'm going to tell you what pissed me off. I called the DM for Tyson because I was on the dedicated account. I called DM for Tyson and I said, why you charge me with truck abandonment out of all this stuff that's went on in my life? I said, two, two funerals. My sister had a major surgery. When did you see time for me to turn in the truck? You know what that man told me? Oh, what you thought was going to happen? You think you thought we wanted to pay $1,000 to come pick up a truck? Mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, okay. I said, I got you. I hung up the phone. And then that's when I put that post on there. And I got the the um, the um the, the attorney's number. He was just 10 times as nasty and as worse as the Tyson DM. So when I told him, I said... I'm going to have my lawyer contact you. He said, yeah, you do that. And I'm going to tell you something about uh, certain Caucasian people. They don't think black people are educated. And I might I might get called every kind of racist thing in the book. I don't care. It is what it is. They don't think that black people are educated. They don't think we have sense. Because when I told him that I was going to have my attorney call him, that was also my oldest sister, he said, yeah, you do that. He thought it was a lie. Mind you, my sister was in Puerto Rico at a funeral for herself. Death happens. Things happen. And people lie. You understand what I'm saying? So, actually, she called him yesterday. Now they're singing a different tune. Because first you was like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, you have her do that. Because I asked the man, I said, well, the truck abandoned me. I, and then, you know, make it so bad, they actually called me and asked me to come back. I said, have you lost your freaking mind? I said, no, sir. I said, I'm good. You understand what I'm saying? No, I'm I'm good with that. You you did you did your thing, so let me handle mine on my end. You understand what I'm saying? So my sister called them. Now they 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 singing a whole different tune now because Brad. I emailed him and asked him last week why did he charge me with truck abandonment after all the stuff that's gonna happen in my life. You know what that man responded to me this morning because my sister called his attorney yesterday. So he didn't have nothing to say to me until this morning when he they said they was gonna remove it. It'd be gone in a week. So that's why I was about to ask you. So, we educated. We're not stupid. We got common sense. You so, understand what I'm saying? Don't do that. So the so now the truck abandonment has been lifted off your off your record. That's another thing you guys gotta. They gotta said no. They said too. it's gonna take a week. They they said it's gonna take a week. It's gonna take a week. But see, the but thing they, about it is today, you would think that people would have heart. No. Be considerate and, and understanding. No, no. I didn't no, leave your freaking truck no, on the side of the road. You told me to take it to the recovery site. Ain't no ain't no heart. Ain't 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 no heart in this in this industry. Ain't no compassion. That's why you gotta get your own ain't truck. No, ain't That's no why you gotta get your own truck. That's why you never get comfortable in 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 a in a in a company. I I learned that the hard way. Yep. You, I, I'm I'm I don't get you know, you could be the best driver you could be the best driver you could get all the accolades right. you could sit there you, you could sit there and say this company is this and this company is that and get a company 
and get a company tattooed on your on your forearm. You know what I'm saying? And they still I, don't give nothing about you. I, I don't know if you guys ever 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 seen the the post, but I got it up. This guy got a tattoo of Prime Ink on his arm. Like, bruh. Why? You know, there's no really dude. There's there's no okay. love. There's there's no love in this industry. They for every one driver yeah. that they get rid of, they got ten more motherfuckers ready to get in. All they worried, all they worried about is them dollars. They can give, they can care less about you and your family and what's going on. They want that. As long as you making them money, they happy. And then I got other, I got other private messages from Hirschbach employees saying that they treat the uh, whites better than they do the blacks. They say the white drivers are the ones with the brand new trucks, and they get the most treatment, and they making the highest pay. I know lie. Well, I no lie. I I I, no I, lie. Pro- I probably will will probably dis uh, fuse that because uh, Bees needs trucking. He's uh, he's a drive. He he's a former driver of Hirschbach, and he's a white guy, and. Yeah, he he kind of got dicked around. He didn't with, get treated well. Yeah, he he kind of got dicked around really? by, by Hirschbach too. So, yeah, yeah, he, mm-hmm. he, got, he got dicked around. Well, I guess it's everybody has their own experience. Everybody has their own experience. So maybe he said it out of anger because he didn't have like you know what I'm saying a good DM or they wasn't beaten to the sound of his drum. So that can make people say things too. But yeah, I got a lot of private emails about that stuff. I, I got I got the I got I got the the post up again, the uh the picture up again. Would you ever for whatever reason, I mean, they you know, this guy in this post said that he's very grateful for Prime. They helped change his life. They moved up to Springfield, Missouri. Uh, they want to, you know, they 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 part of the prime family, prime this and prime that, and he literally got mm. a tattoo of the company name on his forearm. Now I don't know if that's a real tattoo. What's his race? He's a white guy. I I don't know. What's his race? He's a, oh, okay. He's a white guy, but I don't know if that was a. a <laughs> yeah, that a, makes sense. If if that's a real tattoo or 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 one of them, it don't matter. You know. But would you have done something like that? Like, would you would have get a tattoo of of, of a no. company of a company name no. on, it, on you? No, sir. Not a, not unless no, not unless it's my own. Not unless it's my own because I still have my LLC that I paid for. So anytime I buy a tractor, all I gotta do is call that that uh, attorney in um, East Dubuque, Iowa, and let them send me. My LLC in the mail. I got all my paperwork and everything. I just don't have like the little logo that you would put on the truck. No, I would never do that unless it was my own company. Why would I do that? So I don't own that company. I don't have no percentage in stock or none of that. So they're right, not giving me anything but a job. So why would I do that? So right now, as far as as far as everything goes, uh, they they are in the process of taking the the abandonment off your off your driving record. Was that one of the reasons? Was was that one of the reasons why you 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 getting held up for getting into any other companies that you apply for? Yes, yes, because if you got truck abandonment, won't well, no company touch you. Period. I wanted to drive for ATS because ATS pay you really, really good freaking money. Whether well, you company or lease. ATS pays really good money. They have the money and the mouth are there. That man told me that's a seven year disqualification. I didn't even know that they had did that because I would have never thought that they would have did that. Truck abandonment never crossed my mind because of all the stuff that I had went through that they knew about. It never crossed my mind that they would do that. I was so pissed. I was mad as hell. I was mad. And I said, you know what? I said, I, but I'm, I said, but what I am going to do is act like I got some sense. I ain't going to act ignorant. I talked to him like I had some sense. I made all the phone calls I need to call, need to make. I tried to get it taken off on my own. And then that, that brain was like, yeah, you have her do that. I said, I'm, I'm going to show you. I can show you better than I can tell you. We educated around here, sweetheart. You thought I was just throwing that in your ear just so you can just be like, oh, she ain't going to do nothing. She ain't really got no attorney. Yeah, I do. I absolutely do. My older sister does corporate law. The best thing you could ever be to have a job in. Well. And now they singing a different tune. Now it'll be off within a week. 
when you told me you don't care how I can make money and pay my bills, I don't know what to tell you. That's what Brian told me. Well, I don't know what to tell you mm. because it's not coming off. I said, okay, we're going to see about that. We're going to definitely see about that. And I got an email from him this morning. Mind you, I emailed this man last week. So as I emailed him, I'm not sending that man this email. September the 2nd. He didn't respond to me until 11 o'clock this morning. At 10, 11.02 this morning, when we start emailing each other back and forth, we're in the process of removing the abandonment from your record due to the circumstances. And then make it so bad, when I call HR to try to get in contact with him, because I thought I had said, save this office number, she's going to say, um, Brad is not in the office, and that's probably why he's not responding to your emails. I said, no, ma'am. I said, Brad responds to emails from his iPhone. It says right here, sent from iPhone. He read it. But he wasn't going to respond. But I got his attention when my attorney called him. Mm. You're not going to do that to me. I I, I, wouldn't, I would refuse to let that slide. You're going to ruin my life after everything that's going to happen to me. You're going to be so nasty. A multi-billion dollar company. And we don't even talk about the, the tax cuts and all that money they got from the government that they ain't giving to the driver. Everybody knows that. That went in their pocket. Now, all of a sudden, you want to give bonuses and other cents for a mile, but you got to drive your ass off to get it. No, you could keep that little 10 cent. You could keep that. I'm good on that. Wow. And then I asked him how long. He said the process was initiated yesterday. We've done what we need. And now he said we've done what we need to wait for them to process your request. We expect that it will be completed within a week. Well, but I do have an interview with Dollar General, but that's back breaking work. But I got to do what I got to do. Yes, exactly. you understand what I'm saying? Yes, like all these yes, trucking sir. companies out here that'll give me what I need. You know, come on. Shit. Well, that's that's what's up. Night man. transportation. The, what about night? No, I'm saying night transportation and all these other companies that I apply uh, to won't touch me because uh, of what hurts uh, my business. Oh, uh, okay, okay. You know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, okay. Five okay. days out, two yeah. days at home. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, no. I we, ain't, we ain't playing them games. All right. Zipporah yeah. Phillips, everybody. <laughs> Woo. Man. Well, first thing, <laughs> first thing first. You I, got an ear for it, didn't you? I, I like, to, uh, like to send my condolences uh, to you as far as you know of of your of your you know family and friend so my condolences to you yeah um hopefully um man hopefully this is a learning experience for you you know what i'm saying always turn they truck in no matter what yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, just yeah, just, the drive, line, just drive. They will mess up your you life. Know, they'll turn around. They'll they'll turn around and say, you know, you could just leave your truck wherever, wherever. Nah, just try to drive that motherfucker back to the mm -hmm. yard. Put the keys in the slot. I'm trying and to then, and then just take an Uber. They will do take take an Uber from there. Yep. Man. So, Zipporah Phillips, man, thank yep. you for coming on. I really do appreciate you coming on, sharing your story, Lord. You're welcome. I did not realize it was uh, it was it was going to be that deep. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> you got an info, didn't you? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, wow, I'm I'm still flabbergasted, especially <laughs> on the on on the dude jumping in your jumping in the seat driving drunk yeah that i'm 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 still yep yeah i'm still beside myself on that so if, if you if you do if you do if you do any type of drugs or you an alcoholic hershbach will always hire you <laughs> that's what's up that's what i got out of that well thank you very much for coming <laughs> on if you guys want to come on and chop it up with me on the lockout men podcast show or if you have a story to tell you're more than welcome to come over and tell it. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm trying to tell you. Hit me up in the Gmail, <laughs> lockoutmenpodcast at gmail.com. Or come over to Instagram and find me over there and hit me up in the DM. I would like to I would like to turn this down right quick. I know it's a little bit late, but I want to say this. All right. My Facebook. Let me, you know, let me do a little rant about the Facebook right quick. My Facebook, I don't have, I, I don't do nothing on my Facebook 
as far as as far as you know being out you know throwing business on the facebook my facebook is sort of like connected to my youtube all right so if i come if you send me a friends request and i and i hit you up in the in the messenger asking you where did i where did you find me from like if you found me from the call videos or youtube or somebody sent you over there let me know do not like not reply back like literally like if you don't reply back like within a couple of minutes because i know when i text something to you you will see it all right it will pop up or it will mm -hmm. notify you okay but if it if you don't reply back to me and you reply back maybe three four five hours later don't worry about uh don't worry about me adding you to my friends on on facebook you know what i'm saying i i, I can mm. understand i can understand mm -hmm. I, I can understand like you know if if you don't know me and i text you or or you know message you or something like that and you'd be like huh i don't know this person all right just let me know that you don't want to talk you don't want to talk i get it but don't text me and send me right. a friend's request and i ask you like yo where did you know where did i know you from or something like that and you don't want it you you don't come back where the response then yeah the the friend's request is so if you do find me on facebook <laughs> and you want to you don't want to become a friend because like i said everybody that comes on the show are friends of mine now you know what i'm saying we we all you know right. we all can communicate mm -hmm. that way you know what i'm saying if y'all want to come back on if you have another if you have another story to tell, Zipporah, you can always get in contact with me on I'm Facebook. I'm trying to sing. <laughs> <laughs> you can get in contact with me on Facebook and get back with me there. All right, that's my little, that's my little two cents. No, nobody right? co-drive. Always drive solo. <laughs> that's my little two cents. Unless you're married, don't co-drive. <laughs> <laughs> that's my little two cents on uh, Facebook. But yeah, if you guys find me on Facebook, that's fine. Hit me up over there. Hit me up in the messenger if you guys want to come on and share your story. Don't forget, if you like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button so that you can know that when I come up with some videos or videos being posted or whatever, whatever, or when I go live like this, you know, you guys will know and y'all come in and y'all get into the conversation. I would like to acknowledge everybody that came into the uh, came into the chat, the LOM community, that master trucking, D Nitty, David Garcia, J Rich Live, Swamp Girl 69, Pay, Pay Chu. Okay, I'm just gonna call you Pay, bro. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see, let's see, let's see. Who else? Who else stopped up in here? Who else? Stopped up in here today. Now, how do, how do I Brown, go back and listen to it? Lawrence Brown and again, like I said, Swamp Girl. Uh, you can, you can, you know, I will leave the the live feed up for like a day and all like that. But then I will take it down and then I will send you a link to the actual podcast because the 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 link. I mean, okay. the, the 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 live feed is just the behind the scenes. It just shows you know, the behind the scenes, okay. but the actual podcast will actually have my background. It will actually have, it will actually show that picture of that prime guy with the, with the prime tattoo and okay. all like that. But, uh, but yeah, yeah. You definitely go back and, uh, go back on the, uh, Lockout Men podcast on YouTube and, uh, and, uh, catch the replay. Okay. All right, guys, that's okay. it. That's it. <laughs> I am done. We are out of here. You guys take it easy, and I will come back at you guys. Oh, wait. I said just forget the support. Damn, that's saying everything else. Support a brother. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Hook me up with a coffee or something <laughs> like that. Cash app, dollar sign, lockout men, or the coffee app in the description. Hit me up. Hook me up with something to drink. Damn it, I'm thirsty. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace. <laughs>